Now we spent the day asking what other schools think of the plan. Our team coverage continues now with Chris Hernandez, who's live in Wyandotte County. Chris. Yeah, Mark, we are at the KCK School Board headquarters, and as Amy was pointing out, they do not think that these changes are very good. They're not happy with the changes proposed by the governor, and they say that the real problem is that the legislature has not been fully funding the current formula. We also went down the road a bit to the west of here to the Piper School District and talked with them. That is a rapidly going district, growing district that is transitioning from rural to suburban. Piper lost $1.5 million over the past two years because of state budget cuts, but under the new plan, it would expect to get about $600,000 more. It would do the best of all the Wyandotte County districts. But the superintendent there is still concerned that all of these changes could cause a bigger gap between rich and poor districts. Students that live in pretty affluent areas will probably get a, end up with a better education than, than uh, students in non-affluent areas. For Piper, we would probably do very well. But I think it take, we ought to take a broader view of what's good for the state. Now, when we're talking about this money, and you might be wondering, how is it possible that you can pull in all that extra money? It's because of that underlying economic base, the value of the property in your school district. A wealthier district can raise their mill just a little bit and raise, pull in a lot more extra revenue. A place like here in Kansas City, Kansas, they can raise it by the same amount, and they don't get nearly as much money. We're going to talk about that coming up some more tonight at 6. Reporting live in KCK, Chris Hernandez, NBC Action News.